Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to talk about how to clone your SD cards for your retro handhelds to a new branded SD card, or maybe a bigger one, to help make your life easier. So first, we're going to start with the why, and the why is... I don't know if you've ever seen the SD cards that usually come with these devices. This just says 64 on it. There's no brand, don't know who makes it, and none of that. And so we found over the years that these are low quality, prone to failure. It's basically a ticking time bomb. And one day you're just going to be like, I want to go play my favorite retro system. And suddenly your saves are broken. Nothing works. Can't load anything. It's just completely dead. And the culprit is this little guy. So to avoid all of that happening, or not to avoid, but to completely lessen the chance of that happening, the suggestion is to use a branded SD card from Samsung or SanDisk or Kingston, whatever you want, and get rid of this because it's garbage. Now, for those of you that are just wondering why can't we just move folders over onto the new SD card, there is a whole bunch of different reasons. Number one, you have to match the format. So if you just got the SD card, do you know what format the other SD card was that you're copying from? Need that information. Number two, there's a lot of hidden partitions, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, but basically it's not just you put the card into your computer and it shows all of the drives. A lot of them are hidden, so if you're copying just folders over, it's not going to work. You're going to miss a bunch of hidden partitions that actually boot up the device. And so you kind of need to clone the entire thing. Now, for this video, I picked a random device off my shelf, which is the Amberdeck RG351P. I love this thing. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what device you have. It's all the same sort of steps. I just picked this randomly from what I had and decided to use it for today's video for demonstration purposes. Okay, so for preparation, obviously you're gonna need the original SD card. You're gonna need a new SD card that's either the same size or bigger, but you're also gonna need two other things. The first is a branded SD card reader. And I have one here and I'm gonna link in the description. But this one actually has two slots and you can put in a normal micro SD card, but you can also use the adapter to put in a second one. So you can use up both slots. And this adapter usually comes with pretty much every micro SD card nowadays. I don't know, I get them so much. I have, I can make a castle out of these things. So that's all you need. If you wanna do it with one item, grab this SD card reader, grab an SD card that comes with the adapter, and you're basically set, you have everything you need. If you don't get this one or you have your own SD card reader at home, you're gonna need a way to have two SD card readers attached at the same time. So either two of these or two of whatever you have. Just basically the idea is just have two SD card readers or just the one like this with the adapter. Okay, so let's start. First up, we wanna download and install a program called Disk Genius. It's a really powerful program that lets us clone SD cards and do other things. The download button is at the top right of the website, and once again, all of this is in the description. Go through the install with the default settings and then launch Disk Genius when it's done. There's a lot on the screen, but we don't care about a lot of it right now. From the top, select Tools, and then Clone Disk. You're now going to see a list of drives and disks on your computer, and it might look a little bit confusing. Select your source disk, and so that means the micro SD card that came with the device. You can usually find it by the size, it's typically a dead giveaway. You're now going to need to select the target disk, and that means the brand new SD card that you just got, or wherever you're cloning this to, whatever SD card you want to end up with at the end of this, that is the target disk. And same thing, you can usually find it by the size. Make sure that copy all sectors is checked. Click start and you're going to get a warning. You can just click OK. This is going to take some time, so just let it do its thing until it says complete at the bottom. After cloning is done, you're likely to see a scenario where you have a lot of empty, unused space. You can see that while it was cloning, for me it showed 209 gigabytes free. 
or when it's done cloning, select an USD card on the left that we just cloned to, and you can see at the top how many gigabytes are free. This is because I cloned to a bigger SD card. If you clone to the same size SD card, then you won't see this and you don't have to worry about this. So for example, if you cloned a 16 gigabyte card into a 256 gigabyte card, there's probably over 200 gigabytes of space that's just not being used right now, and we don't have access to it. So ideally, you'd want to use that for your ROMs, so you can add more games. So let's do that. Now this part here is going to be different for every single device, every single firmware, and all that sort of thing, so you're going to need to do some sleuthing. But you want to find out which of the partitions is the one that has ROMs. And sometimes you might get lucky and there's only one partition, so we can extend that, but other times you might see 5, 6, 7 or more partitions. Let's do it the easy way. Eject all of your SD cards and then connect the one that we cloned to. So the branded proper SD card and then open this genius again. Select the SD card on the left side. Now for me, looking at the list of partitions, I can tell that most likely the games partition, which is currently my iDrive, is where my ROMs are. This one was kind of obvious. You can also open Windows File Explorer, head to the iDrive, and then see your ROMs there as well to double check. Basically, whatever letter has your ROMs in it is the one you want to extend. The partition that has your games in it would typically be an XFAT or FAT32 to help narrow it down. Now, if the partition doesn't have a letter assigned, so you don't see it in File Explorer and so you can't double check it, right click it and then choose Assign New Drive Letter, give it a letter and you should see it now. So basically some trial and error to see where your ROMs are, using letters and partitions and all of that. Should be very easy. Once you find the partition that has your games on it, we're just going to expand it. So right click the partition and select extend partition. It should now automatically expand and you can see that it wants to use the full 234.75 gigabytes available in my scenario. Go ahead and click start and then yes to any warnings and you can just click complete when it's done. And you're done. If you go and check that partition now, compared to previously, you'll see that it's now using all of your space, and you can now transfer more ROMs and files over. That's it for this video. Really nice and really simple. Hope you enjoy having a lot more space to play some games. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to just chat about retro games. Support me on Patreon if you like my videos. Other than that, hope you all have a good one and see you next time.